So I've used floor generator here with one uh, wood texture to create this material. Um, and I'm just going to show you how that's done. You know, it's normally in floor generator you load in lots of planks, but here I've just got one. Um, and yet it's different on all of the planks. So the way we do this is I started with a rectangle. Then I put a floor generator on. Uh, I'm messed around with the length of the planks. We work in millimeters, so I said two, two meters. Uh, I changed the width here slightly. Um, made it extrude two millimeters and bevel like this. And I changed the offset, min offset 20 and max offset 80. So that what you get is variations in the planks. You don't get them all the same length and all the same. You know, if I made this zero, it would go like that. So we want it to look like this. Um, then I put a UVW map on and I put box and I put real world scale and I made sure you could see it here. So uh, it's just it's a material editor and make it visible in the viewport. And you can't see a thing, which is weird. But if I click here, you'll be able to see it now. That's the material. Now, as you can see, it's not, you know, it's just a box going over the whole thing, so you can get this repeti repetition here, which you don't want. So, what you need to do, I've got my texture here set at real world scale, so what you need to do to avoid this overlapping is you put on unwrap UVW, uh, and you just need to really set one. One of these polys, open the editor, and see you've got one of these planks selected. If you zoom way out, basically one unit, this what you're looking at, or where was it? I don't know. Uh, what you're looking at anyway. Let me show you again. Open UV editor. Okay, let me delete the unwrap. Put on a new unwrap. Select the poly, select one of these, open UV editor, and this box is one millimeter. Now, you know, normally that would be one, if you didn't have real world scale, that would be one tiling by one. But in, if it is real world scale, that's just one millimeter, that box, so that's why it's so small. So just control I to invert the selection, and then go mapping, flatten mapping. You can leave this as it is, you can reduce this if you want doesn't make much difference but you can do that all right now here you have various items we're just going to click on the end one here freeform mode because you can get these little handles which are really useful uh, you press control and drag on this handle and it keeps everything uniform and drag on this handle and we basically want these planks to be the same size as this blue one here that's why we embedded it so we could see the size so about the same there you go it's the same. I could go a bit bigger, but it's not really going to make any difference. So there you go. Close this down. Now you've unwrapped this. Press F2, and you'll see that. So like I showed you in the material editor, uh, you've got this. Well, doing funky stuff. This is my texture. One texture which I made seamless. It's an arrow away texture. Uh, I plugged it into multi-texture slot, but just one. And then I said, uh, use textures. And then I've adjusted the gamma here, and I've adjusted the randomness on the gamma. If you look here, you'll see that randomness being applied. See the randomness and the color being applied. If you look at the, I also added saturation 90%. and made that only show in 20% and at 25%. Um, this is from website sorry this multi texture map if you need it is from CG source website you can download it for free you just need to uh, you just need to create an account so multi texture map here and you can download it here but you have to register and sign in and sign up and sign in okay so if we look at the texture of the yeah. boom 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 it's right here that's it. Now, 
might be wondering. Let's see. Let's pull the camera out of it. I want to see. Oh, let's increase the variation, just so you can see that more. Whoop. Oh, okay. Over here, I'm doing progressive rendering. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, real-time rendering so I figured it's just much quieter and quicker if I just use one computer you know if I'm using loads of cores obviously that's quicker for an overall render but for this this is perfect so if I bring up the material editor just I want you to see the difference I just need to increase this I got it point 0.1 let's put it point 0.3 and you should start seeing it there you go so now you can start seeing the difference in color there and that's why I use the, the, that multi texture um, it's just so you can see this. I want you to be able to see that difference. And normally for me, I'll, I'll so I won't go as high as this 0.3. I might go 0.15, and then you get this slight variation. But it, it's entirely up to you. So material settings. Just going to go over those quickly, just in case someone's curious. Uh, but if you just want to know how to do how to unwrap and use one texture uh, that's covered so material settings quickly I've got real world scale on here that's at 3 meters by 800 uh, it's just a rough guess but that's that um, I reduce the blur to point 0.2 I've created this which is a bump map uh, there you go and I put the blur to 0 0.01 because otherwise it can look like porridge a bit. Let's see, I don't know if you're going to see this. If we zoom in here a bit, uh, probably not, but let's see. If I set this at 1, which is default, this will redo its thing. I don't know if you can notice the difference. Let's see, bump. Let's put the bump at 10 just so you can see it. I need to go closer on the camera. Um, anyway, I did it so you don't get so much here going on like this and like that. I like to go with low numbers on the bump, like more real and less like porridge. So you can't really see it. I'll maybe do another tutorial where you can see it better. But I'll set that down there. Reflective glossiness, I've set to 0.3. Uh, again, real world scale. And this is another map I made. Uh, and this is another map for reflection. So that's reflection, that's glossiness. You're going to say, well, they look about the same. Uh, if we compare them side by side, So that's the bump, which is very gradient here, so you don't get harsh. If you make it white and black, you can get very harsh amounts, and you don't want those harsh, harsh differences. Uh, if you... The reflection is a bit harsher. So here it won't reflect, here it will reflect a bit more. And the glossiness, let's just go between these quickly. Oops. Right, so this is the pump reflection. I'm going to close this that one down, the diffuse. That's the reflection, bump, reflection, glossiness, reflection, glossiness. Not much difference. But the glossiness is slightly less white, slightly less bright. The colors are a bit closer together. And that's kind of what you want on glossiness. You want to have it, you know, I could actually make them 
closer. I could probably use the bump on the glossiness, it would probably be better. But they're close, but reflection is slightly whiter. Um, and then what I've done in the material editor. Yeah, see? It's not seen. Anyway, I like it. Uh, in the material editor, I changed these. I set reflection. I set it at 66. It's just a guess. So that was. And then glossiness of 0.7. Um, and then I changed the Fresnel to 2.5. I made sure this was on my facet, GTR, GGX. And I changed the tail off 2.3. Um, and then these are 100%. When I was using my maps at 100%, I wasn't liking the effect. I'll just show you. So I reduced them to 50. See, I get a patchy. Lots of reflection here, nothing there. So like I said, my maps could be better. But I just faked it by getting this reflection and adding this to something I liked. Uh, basically, without the maps at all, it came out like that. So I just got those to an amount which I thought, yeah, that's about right. And then I turn these on, but I put them at 50%. And that seemed to work nice. So I've got 50% map color. It's not so patchy. You can see what's happening. It's not, it's not so patchy. It's, it's a nice texture. Um, now someone's going to say, well, what about lighting? So just quickly, quickly, quickly going over that. Uh, I have one light in the scene. Let's be real. Right this light there if I select it. Uh, it's just an HDRI, okay, uh, I set the multiplier at 1, um, and if you look at the material editor, ba -ba -ba. Oh, you can delete that, that's nothing. That was basically, I wanted to put a multi-texture in, and I put a multi-texture, the thing is, is, you know, if you're going to put it onto this bitmap, and put a multi-texture, you grab it, you drag it on there, and it, it doesn't attach like most maps do, so... What I do is you got to click on here, you got to manage textures. There you go, add bitmap. Uh, just select a bitmap, anything, it doesn't really matter. And then what you can do is you can take this and you can plug this into this slot here, you see. Otherwise you, you can't plug it in, you know, if you, if you bring it over, like, there's nothing to plug into. So you got to do that and then you can plug it in. And and mess around with the multi texture, so that was that was the simplicity of what that map was doing there. So basically, this is an HDRI which I don't know we got from somewhere. Someone got from somewhere, and I've loaded it. And it's not a very good one, but it's worked. I've put the inverse gamma right down at 0.65, uh, and that's going in. And, and then I rotated it until I got a kind of effect I like. I put 340 degrees, so. If you see, you've got, uh, let's see, see this shadow here, that shadow, you got light coming here, light coming there, it's like, a, I, I liked it, so that was, that's what that is, and yeah, that's it, so that's the tutorial, um, you can mention in comments if you have any questions, or if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, okay.